If you're looking for a daily to-do list for rare mounts within WoW, then this list is going to be for you, because these mounts will have one shot, one opportunity, until tomorrow at least. They're all going to have a daily lockout, meaning you'll generally have one chance per day, and then you'll have to wait till tomorrow or do it on other characters to have other chances at these mounts. First up, we have Heroic Zul'Grub, which we're going to find within Stranglethorn Jungle, and this dungeon's great because it's a two for one, basically meaning there's two bosses within this dungeon that have a chance to drop a different mount each, so good value to run this place. And the first one up is going to be the Armored Razashi Raptor. This is on around a 1% drop chance, and this is going to drop from Bloodlord Mandakir, which we'll find southeast of the dungeon, very trivial to kill. The next one up is going to be the Swift Zulian Panther, 1% drop chance as well, and that is going to come from High Priestess Kulnara, which is north of the dungeon. You'll have to kind of progress down to the bottom layer of the temple area, and you'll find her there. You don't need to do any other prior bosses to reach these two bosses. You can just head straight to them, kill them, and get your chance of the mount. And these two mounts are both kind of reference mounts to the old Swift Zillion Tiger and the Swift Razashi Raptor from the old version of Zul'Grub, which was a raid. Our next stop is going to be Heroic Sephic Halls, which we'll find within Arkandun within Terakar Forest Outland. You'll head there and the East Dungeon, there'll be four different dungeons in this place, the East one, you'll head over there and you'll make sure you are on Heroic Difficulty by right-clicking on your character portrait, going down to Dungeon Difficulty, slip it onto Heroic, head inside, and the second boss within this dungeon has just over a 1% chance of dropping the Raven Lord mount. Fortunately, you will need to kill the prior boss, make your way to Anzu, very easy to kill, Kill that and you'll have that, you know, just above 1% chance of getting yourself the Raven Lord. And something interesting about this rare as well, or this boss, was previously way back, it used to require a druid specifically to summon it. And that was the only way you had a chance at the mount, but obviously that's been changed since. With that out of the way, next up you want to head over to Shatraf Sitter, and here we'll find a portal taking us to the Isle of Quel'Danaz. Once we're on that island, on the northeast-ish you'll find the dungeon called Magister's Terrace. Make sure you're on Heroic once again and head inside. And from this dungeon, we're going to have a chance of getting the Swift White Hawk Strider, which is on roughly a 4% drop chance, which isn't too bad compared to a lot of the other drop mounts, so a little bit higher than most. And this is going to come from the last boss, Kel Thass. He is the last boss, though, so you will need to make your way through the full dungeon. But one thing to note, before you get to Kel Thass, there'll be a trash pack. If you walk around the trash pack and go straight to Kel Thass that way, then you'll ignore all of his RP, which is going to save you a good amount of time, so I definitely would recommend doing that. Kill him and you'll have that 4 percentage chance of getting the mount. And next up is going to be the Howling Fjord within Northrend. You'll head over there and in the center you'll find this kind of massive structure called the Utgard Keep. On the north side you'll find the entrance to Utgard Pinnacle. You'll want to head inside there once again making sure you are on Heroic. And from this dungeon we're going to be able to get the Blue Proto Drake on roughly a 1% drop chance. This is going to come from the third boss who is Scaddy the Ruthless. But you don't need to kill the first two, you can simply just walk past them and make your way to the third. And then once you're on the third boss, you'll kill the mobs. These will drop harpoons. And once Scaddy is in front of the harpoons on his Proto Drake, you'll use the Proto Drake, also the harpoons to bring down the Proto Drake. You'll need three. Once he's down, kill him, and you'll have that chance of getting them out. We also have another stop within Northrend, and that is going to be over in Storm Peaks. You'll head over there, and there'll be dailies that you can unlock that will reward you with the Hildnir Spoils. And inside that bag will be a 3% chance of the White Polar Bear. Now, if you've not unlocked those dailies, no problem. What you'll want to do is head over to K3, and inside the building on the right, there'll be a goblin that will give you the quest called They Took Our Men. You'll follow through that chain. It's going to take you like 20, 30 minutes to get it all done. Once you're done with it, though, you'll unlock daily quests at Brunhilde Village with the Hildnir, and you'll generally have one per day, but there is some weirdness that you can do with, like, cross-realm stuff and going to other phases that can give you a second or third, but generally you're going to have one daily per day. Do that, get your Hildnir spoils, and you'll have that 3% chance of getting the mount. The next one up, you're going to have roughly four chances per day per character. And even though it's above that, you know, one attempt per day kind of thing, I still thought it was worth talking about because it's pretty much the same thing, right? And that's going to be the rattling cage that comes from one of four rares within Tanan Jungle in Draenor. And from that rattling cage, you have a chance of getting one of three mounts, the Warsong Diafang, the Armored Razorback, or the uh, Tundra Eye Tooth. You'll always be guaranteed a mount from the Rattling Cage, but it can be a duplicate as well. So if you've already learned the Warsong Diafang, you can still get another Warsong Diafang. That's just unfortunately how it is. The Rattling Cage is on roughly a 10% drop chance, but there is some speculation recently that it was nerfed down to around 5%, but there's nothing really too strong you know, to give evidence to that. But I thought it was worth noting either way. 
So these four rares you can kill once per day for their loot, but there's four of them, so that's going to give you four chances per day at the Rattling Cage. And the first one up is going to be Doom Roller, which we'll find just in front of the entrance to Hellfire Citadel. Next up will be Vengeance, which is more south. Then we have Terror Fist, which is kind of southwest, and it starts at the bottom of the path and runs up. Then we have Death Talon, which is kind of more northwest. And that's all four of them, but these are going to be kind of tricky to get if you don't have Flying within Draenor. But no worries, because very soon, once the pre-patch comes out, everyone will be able to get fly uh, Flying in Draenor. There won't be any prerequisites anymore. And that's going to make getting these rares very easy because you can fly up to them. But I would recommend sitting at one of them ready to kind of kill it because they do die very quickly. And their respawn is fairly long. They're on like a one to three hour respawn. So you do want to be definitely ready for them and sat at their spawn locations. They also have a chance of dropping something called the Medallion of the Legion, which when used will give you a thousand reputation with all the various pod reps. This can be sold as well and still sells for a good price. So it might be worth doing that for a little bit of gold if you want to sell those too. Our next destination is going to be over in Argus, and if you don't know how to get to Argus, there will be a scuffed video link in the description down below showing you. If you don't remember how to get back to Argus, there is a teleporter on Crassus Landing within the Broken Isles Dalaran. And there's a bunch of different rares here that are going to give us mounts, but first of all I want to explain how the rares actually work within Argus. So they're on kind of like a 4 hour rotation, their respawn time is pretty quick if they're in the rotation, and if they're not in the rotation they won't spawn at all. So after about 4 hours the rotation will change and there'll be a bunch of different new rares up. So if the rare that you're after isn't up, you want to keep checking back every few hours to see if it is now in the rotation. The only exception to this is if they're a part of one of the world quests, and then they'll ignore that rule until the world quest ends, and then they'll go back into like the rare rotation pool. And of course all these rares can only be killed once per day for their loot. So first up we have Antoran Wastes, and here you'll find a rare called Houndmaster Kirax, which is in kind of like a cave below. And within that cave you'll kill him, and you'll have a chance of getting the Vile Fiend on roughly a 3% drop chance. And pretty much all the mounts from these places are on roughly a 3% drop chance, so to keep that in mind, I'm not just going to keep repeating 3% over and over again. Next up is the Bile Tooth Nasha, and this is going to have a chance of coming from one of two different rares. The first one up is Rax Full, and you'll find him kind of on the left hand side, a bit, a bit away from where Houndmaster Karax is. And then the other one is going to be Priscilla, and she's going to spawn in the cave kind of above where the Houndmaster is. It'll be a cave full of imps, and she'll be right at the back of the cave. So you want to be trying to kill those, and you'll have a chance of getting the mount from either of those rares. The final one within Antoran Waste is going to be Blistermore, and that's going to drop the Crimson Slavermore. And once again, he's not too far from Houndmaster Kirax either, so you just want to be looking out for these rares to see if they're part of a world quest or if they're on the current rare rotation. The next one up is Makari, and we're going to have a few rares here once again. First one up is going to be Wrangler Kravos, and that's going to have a chance of dropping the Maddened Chaos Runner. The next one up is going to be the Venom Tail Skyfin, and that's going to have a chance of dropping the Lambent Mana Ray. And then the final one in this zone is going to be Screeg the Devourer, and that's going to have a chance of dropping the Acid Belcher. Same before, they're all roughly a 3% drop chance, and I'll follow these normal rare rules that the other zone did as well. The next things up kind of loosely follow the rules again, so I thought it made sense for them to be in the video, and that is going to be the Fell Spotted Egg Mounts. These drop from rares within Argus that you can only kill once per day for the loot, and the egg will be on roughly a 33% chance from these rares, and then after a few days the egg will hatch, and it'll have a chance of containing a few things, but one of those things is a mount, and there's diff four different mounts that can come from the egg. The first one up is going to be the Fell Glow Mana Ray, the second is the Scintillating Mana Ray, the third is the Dark Glow Mana Ray, and the final is the Vibrant Mana Ray. Now you can also have a chance of getting a Combat Pet, or also a junk item from the egg as well. The mounts are on roughly a 5% drop chance from the egg, and the mounts won't be duplicates. So if you get the Dark Spawn Mana Ray, you'll never get the Dark Spawn Mana Ray again from an egg once you've learned it at least. And in terms of the eggs themselves, you'll be getting these from a rare called Naroa, which is in Crocoon. There'll be a rare called Sabul, which we'll find in Makari. And then finally, there'll be a rare called Varga within Antor and Wastes. This one can be a little bit tricky to get to because you've got to go like along the lava pool and you'll find it in a cave under there. Now, there is also a fourth rare called Kara the Pale, and this supposedly dropped the eggs at one point, but I can't really find any confirmation that it still does. And if it does, the eggs seem to be on a, an insanely low drop chance that it might not even be worth killing it. But I thought it was worth mentioning in case you want to try. And you'll find Kara the Pale within Makari within a cave. And these eggs aren't unique, so you can stack up as many as you want in your bags and just keep opening them when they're ready to hatch. 
And next up is going to be Najata, and within Najata we're going to find a rare called Soundless, which once again can only be killed once a day for its loot, and that's going to have a chance just below 1% of dropping the Silent Glider. Now what makes this rare rough though is it is more along the lines of a typical rare. It's going to have roughly a 2-8 to eight hour respawn timer, so sometimes you're going to be waiting a very long time for this. Uh, I would recommend using making use of things like Group Finder to try and get groups quicker. The other problem is it's generally in areas that are very difficult to reach if you don't have a flying mount, but maybe someone that you join in a group will help you out and kind of give you a lift up. Otherwise, you're going to have to use some funny gimmicks to try and get yourself onto the platform where Soundless spawns. And of course, I record this footage on the PTR just to show the rare and the mount would drop. And the PTR, if you don't know, you don't get to keep anything that you get on the PTR. So getting on the PTR is a big old kick in the face. Our next destination is going to be over in Mechagon, and once again, if you don't know how to get to Mechagon, there will be a video in the description down below. But don't quote me on this, I believe you can just straight up fly to Mechagon if you have BFA flying at least, and you'll be able to kill the rares. Not something I've tested personally though, so you know, as I said, don't quote me on that, blame someone else if it doesn't work. And there's going to be two rares here once again that you can kill once per day for their loot. The first one up is going to be Rust Feather, which you'll find kind of the very far south of Mechagon on the mountainy area. And this has a chance of just dropping the rusted keys to the Junk Heap Drifter, which is one of those weird like cogwheel bike things. They do look pretty cool. And this is going to be on roughly a 0.5% drop chance. And the respawn of this thing is about 30 to 60 minutes. Next up is the Arachnoid Harvester, and this is going to have a chance of dropping the rusty Mechano Crawler, once again on roughly a 0.5% drop chance. And this guy spawns just left of Bundo's yard and does seem to spawn, like take a little bit longer to spawn than Rust Feather does. But if you have access to the alternative version of Mechagon, then it also spawns in there as well. But it doesn't matter which version you kill, they both kind of share the same loot lockout. So you'll only be able to kill it once per day for its loot. Our next destination is going to be over in Old Doom. And this requires the kind of BFA phasing of the zone, the, the phasing that happens in 8.3 where the zone's under assault. You can reach this zone as a level 110 to 120 character without doing any of the quest chains. Or once the pre-patch hits, that'll be level 45 to 50. Um, outside of that, though, I don't think you can actually see this phasing. And you'll be able to find way off south will be a platform. You'll find Vortex Pinnacle, and near Vortex Pinnacle will be a platform. And around that platform, a rare can spawn called Ishak of the Four Winds. Killing this will have a roughly a 3% chance of giving you the reins of the Drake of the Four Winds. And this is going to be a very difficult rare to kill, as it's basically not soloable for most people. It does a lot of damage, so you're going to need a group for it. It also does have a fairly long respawn as well, of like an hour or so. So a little bit tricky to get a hold of this one. The next mounts we're going to talk about still have that rule of, you know, only being able to kill them once per day. The problem with these ones, though, is they're limited time, so they're only going to be around for a few days, and then you'll have to wait X period to be able to have another chance at them. But while they're around, you'll be able to kill them once per day. The first one up is going to be the Waste Marauder, which has roughly a 3% chance of dropping from Rotfesta. Rotfesta can only spawn, though, during the Amethyst Assaults within Uldum. And you'll find that kind of slightly to the right of the obelisk of stars when it's there. And once again, it has quite a long respawn of like just over an hour or two. So you are going to be waiting a while to get this one. The next one up is going to be the Malevolent Drone, which drops from Corpse Eater. And Corpse Eater will only spawn during the assault that happens on the left hand side of the zone. So the Akir Unearthed. And you'll find a Corpse Eater just kind of below Orsis. And this one seems to be on a quicker respawn than the other rares. But it, you know, you are still going to be waiting like 30, 40 minutes for it to respawn. And the drop chance on this used to be quite low, but it was recently buffed, and people believe it to be around that kind of 2% 2 to 3% now, the same as the other rares in the zone. The next ones up are going to be the 5 rares that you can get during a Mogu Assault in Veil of Eternal Blossoms, so the assault that happens on the left hand side of the map. And these you won't be able to see unless you progress through the quest line far enough, so you will need to do the stuff where you're aiding Magni in the 8.3 quest line. Once you get to that point, you will be able to find these 5 rares, and if the Mogu Assault is up, then we'll find five different mobs. The first one is called Hali, and that's going to be a kind of bird that's flying around one of the mountains kind of on the left-hand side of the zone, and that'll have roughly a 3% chance of giving the clutch of Hali. Then we'll also have the Wren's Stal Stalwart Hound, and that's going to be a 3% drop from Hound Launch Wren, which we'll find just kind of more to the west side of the zone. You'll be kind of walking up and down there. And then we'll have Zin Lao, which is going to drop from Andy the Loyal. And that's going to be more, a bit more south of this area of the assault. That's once again a 3% drop chance. 
And then the final one up is going to be the Rajani War Serpent. And for this, you need an item called the Pristine Cloud Serpent Scale, which is going to drop from the rare called Relun, which you'll find within the Gaolai Halls. Right at the back on the lower section, it can spawn there. And all of these rares have roughly the same respawn chance of like 30 minutes to an hour. So you will be waiting a little bit of time to get your hands on them. And the drop chances are roughly 3% on these items as well. There is also the seasonal mounts, like the Brewfest mounts, but I think those are a little bit too far away to talk about. It's, you know, it's literally a year before you can have another shot at them. The ones that we were just talking about a moment ago, you only have to wait like a week and a half-ish to have your daily shots at them. And then during that period while the assault is up, you'll have like three to four days of you know having an attempt at them. And I just wanted to mention these because I know someone in the comments is going to be like, well, you forgot about this. The Bronze Drake and the Battle Bear, one, I don't really consider those rare. And two, they're not really part of your daily kind of thing to do because one is 100% drop chance being the Bronze Drake and the other one is the Armani Battle Bear, which is on like a 95% drop chance. So after two days max, you're going to have both of those mounts anyway. So they're not going to be a part of your daily schedule of stuff to do. So outside of that, I hope you did enjoy this video. A bit long, but it does include all of the stuff that you can do in daily. So you can write all these down and be on your way and you'll have your kind of little schedule of stuff that you can do daily to get yourself some extra mounts. I will also be doing a separate one of these for Shadowlands once Shadowlands is closer to launch. I'll probably include these in a playlist or something along those lines. But outside of that, look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.